Hello and welcome back. I am Jonathan Pritchard from iCanReadMinds.com and this is another Obsidian introduction on a topic that I was asked about. How do you make sense of folders, links, and tags? Well, this is how I do it. First off, I want to cover folders and I want to start with a word of caution. Don't get too caught up in using folders. Folders are a very, very rigid approach to organizing information and it could be a never ending yak shaving project of finding the perfect way to organize your folders. Well, Obsidian's most powerful feature is the ability to link ideas directly to each other not how do I design the world's most perfect folder setup. So I want to show you how I've approached setting up some of the folders. Let's dig in. Really, I only use a handful of folders. Some of the essentials is attachments, all photos, videos, audio files that I'm using in any of my links are defaulted to be put into my attachments folder. That way I know that if I need some image or metadata and I can't figure out which file or, or um, note it was in, I know it's going to be living in my attachments folder. Catch-all is my default put a note here folder. This way, any of my really quick notes and off the cuff note taking goes into the catch-all, I know that 90% of all my notes are going to live in catch-all here. And then um, these others like templates is where my template folders go. And some of this folder organization is more useful for plugins that I'm using than it is for me to keep track of my own data because the plugin might ask, okay, what's your default template folder? It's like, well, I guess I should have a templates folder then, but I don't spend a lot of time in my templates folder. I'm spending almost all my time in catch all. One way that folders really are important. I pulled from my work as a graphic designer at a social media marketing company. I was only there for about eight months, but I learned a lot while I was there and having a really rigid folder structure was important if I were going to be out today and somebody else needed to jump in to answer a client question or get them some thing that I had created but hadn't delivered yet. So it's really important to have a folder structure that a complete stranger would be able to navigate and make sense of. So to that end, I made an example one here saying client work and then I would have five or six clients, so client A, B, C, D, E, whatever. And inside each of those, I would have their brand assets, any brand guidelines, any, any logos, all the right hex codes for their colors, their custom font files would all live in their brand assets. Then the projects that I'm working on for them would live in here and the best way that I figured out how to do it was breaking it down by the month since it was a monthly deliverable kind of a thing. We would work one month ahead and I was designing all their Facebook posts and their Instagram posts and that kind of a thing. So inside September, I would have an exports folder and working files folder, which is where all the Photoshop files would live, their Illustrator files would live there. And then when their work was done and it's ready to be exported, I would export all the Facebook designs because they're at their special ratio, would go to the Facebook folder under exports. Then all the Instagram images for September would be exported to the Instagram folder of September. And that way, it's really easy if the client was going, hey, there's a weird thing in one of the Facebook posts for September, I would know exactly where to go to see the post that they're talking about or to fix the post that they're talking about. I would know where that working file was located. So that is a big plus in the use folders checkbox. Um, but it's not how I use Obsidian day to day. Almost everything, like I said, goes into catch all 
and instead it is between links between notes. And links are kind of connections between the titles of each note. So that's kind of how I think about it. And the, the way that I use it is I'm pretty much making a note for every noun in my life, whether it's a project or a routine that I'm creating or friends and clients and family, all that kind of stuff, I will create a note for each of those. So for example, I would create a new note and call it um, client X details. So then all the information about client X, think of this as in old school terms, your Rolodex of all the information about client X. And you could say that uh, Carl Herbert is the CEO and Stacy is the CTO and whatever. So now I've got links between files to client X, right? So now it, it'd be pretty easy to hold down control, click that, and it automatically created a new note for that person and a new note for this person. So now when we're in client X and we could even update this and say, um, corporate client uh, cleaner. So now it links out to Carl Herbert and it links out to Stacy. So then when we're in the corporate client cleaner note, over here on the right, I, I've got the links pane open and there are no linked mentions from any other notes in my database to the corporate client cleaner note. But if we click into Carl Herbert's note, you can see that there's one note that links into Carl Herbert and it is the corporate client cleaner note, which is this one right over here. Same goes for Stacy. And you could see the mention of the line, Stacy is the CTO of the corporate client cleaner. You're like, all right, that's neat. So now you can see how links between notes, you can embed one note into, or the mention of one note into another note, and that's how you can keep things clean. Another example of this would be uh, kind of in keeping with the magic and mentalism theme that I've been using. Imagine that I am creating a brand new Broadway show. Now, what routines do I want to include in here? Well, now we can get into links. This is where links are really, really powerful because you could create a new routine. Uh, routine Z is here and say it's really good for close up stage parlor. It's one of those rare things that could work for five people or 5,000. Cool, there it is. So now going to close routine Z and then reopen the brand new Broadway show note. And now I would go over here to my tag pane and go, well, since I'm going to be on Broadway, this is going to be a large stage. So I need to know what routines are best for stage. And since I've created a note for each of the routines that I could possibly perform, that I know how to do, I've tagged each one, whether it's good for stage, whether it's good for close up, whether it's good for parlor. So now when I'm designing a new stage show, click, and now I see all the routines that are good for stage over here. Say it's the bullet catch, handcuffs, hanging upside down, routine X, routine Z. So now I could say the set list is going to be comprised of the bullet catch and maybe 
hanging upside down and routine routine Z. There we go. So now I can build my set list and I can have quick access to all the details about the routine. So you can see that the tags, illusion, stage, TV promo, daring, danger, favorite, any anything that I could think of to describe this routine would go into the tags. But the routine's title would be what I use to link with. So I hope, hope that makes sense, right? So now all the information about hanging upside down is handy, but it's not cluttering up the focus of this note, which is creating the set list for the brand new Broadway show. So I use tags to tag each note with the way that I might think about later that I might want this note again, right? So here's the routine that I know how to perform and it's good for stage. And then later I'm like, oh, what would be a good stage routine for this show? Well, search for stage and then all the routines would show up over here. And then when I'm creating my set list, I'm creating links between these notes that we'd show in the graph like this, right? So when in doubt, start with links for your notes and then use tags for the metadata for ways you would want to find this information later. Is it a quote? Is it a daily note? Is it a good thing? Was it a bad thing? Was it favorite thing? Is it a worst thing? All that goes into tags that I would put at the bottom of the note or at the top if you want it to be super visible. doesn't matter where you put it as long as you tag it. So then mainly focus on how your information links together use tags to find that information later, and then folders for even larger scale organization, but use the power of links and tags to organize and rediscover your information more so than losing your, your sanity, looking for exactly the right folder structure. Lean on a catch-all folder, dump everything into that one place, and then as you need to pull information out as you need to pull notes into their own little universe then you start using folders so that's pretty much all i wanted to go over in terms of obsidian folders links and tags and to get you started on how to use them so that's my recommendation don't get too bogged down in folders or links or tags just kind of pick links to start with tag everything as you see fit, and then as you use it more and more, you'll figure out how to use it better and better. But that's it for this one. If you have any other questions, comments, or concerns, drop them in the comments below. My name is Jonathan Pritchard from iCanReadMinds.com. See you in the next video.